Dan Jones is an honest and hard-working bloke, the product of an equally decent family. Eight years ago, he met the woman he thought he'd spend the rest of his life with. Her name is Sarah Jane Parkinson. Together, she and Dan planned their wedding and started building a house. But just as life was looking so good, Parkinson started making up vile stories about her fiancé. She went to police, accusing Dan of despicable domestic violence and rape. He strenuously denied the allegations, but to no avail. It would take six long years and cost hundreds of thousands of dollars before the truth was finally revealed, that the woman Dan thought loved him wasn't a victim, but a pathological liar. Dan Jones lived every man's nightmare falsely accused of rape by the woman who claimed to love him. You've gone from meeting this innocent, sweet girl to this premeditated monster. Sarah Jane Parkinson had a big smile and a little girl's voice. When Daniel attacked me. Which hid a wicked heart. A hand on my heart. I know it was Daniel. I recognised him. When her cunning web of lies brought down her fiancé... She just flipped like a complete stranger. She turned on his parents. You went to this, war. Yep, this was a battle. Identify your enemy, know who they are, marshal them, corral them, and finish them. But gullible police believed Parkinson's despicable claims. The incarceration of someone is supposed to be the last resort of the law. Dan Jones was thrown into jail. Yeah, he said last words to me on that phone call. Well, I love you, son. And I could hear his voice breaking. <laughs> the Jones family destroyed. My only dream in life, Liz, was to have a nice little house with my family around me. That's all I ever wanted. I didn't think that was a lot to ask. With all hope lost, it took one good cop to finally unmask this serial liar. And as criminals go, how do you class her? She'd be up with the worst. It all began back in 2011, when Dan Jones, then 25, met 20-year-old Sarah Jane Parkinson. He was an AFP officer working as a dog handler, and she was an airline employee. They fell in love, and within months were planning their wedding and building a house. She was very kind of girly and cute and innocent and very kind of a little bit old-fashioned as well. Like she always, you know, dressed very nicely. She always wore, you know, nice dresses and like frocks and all that kind of thing. She was immaculate in you know, her dress, her appearance, her manners. Um, everything was just perfect. Mum always used to tell the story about going down to the washing machine or something. Oh, yeah. I had a cane toad waiting for me. Yeah, in the Everything. They don't come more solid than the Jones family. Michelle, a librarian, and Ian, a former Navy engineer, had been married 30 years, and they wished the same for their son. The family welcomed Parkinson into their hearts and home. But within a year, they began to doubt Dan's dream girl. She didn't have friends, and her many stories about her troubled past worried them. She was raped by one of her, apparently, from one of her friend's fathers. Um, a Turkish diplomat apparently uh, raped her as well, but fled the country before charges were laid. And yeah, apparently there's been a few other boyfriends that have been abusive. She has a, had a bad luck of bad run of boyfriends. Any suspicions, though, were outweighed by sympathy, and Dan forged ahead with their plans together. But it all changed in 2012, when Sarah Jane Parkinson started a new job at Queen Bee Ann Police Station as a clerical assistant. She started staying out with work colleagues, and it's where she met her new lover, a New South Wales policeman. Parkinson soon began weaving an intricate web of lies, claiming that she was a victim of domestic violence. When Parkinson came to work with bruises, police said she told them that Dan was abusing her. 
What she failed to mention was that she suffered a heart condition, which made her dizzy, and tunnel vision, all of which contributed to a series of household accidents and injuries. She was always clumsy and we always kind of used to make a bit of a joke. So every time she'd have like a fall or she'd hurt herself or walk into something, you know, she'd laugh it off and you'd be just typical Sarah, that's just what she did. But what she was doing was giving herself a bruise or a mark and that she could then weave into her tail. You had no idea that behind the scenes you were being portrayed as a violent man? I had no idea. No idea whatsoever. The first Dan knew the police were investigating him was nearly two years into their relationship when Sarah Jane Parkinson's boss, Inspector Anthony Hill, called him to Queen Bian Police Station for what he called a chat. Dan decided to take his dad, Ian, along with him. You walk inside and you find out... Yep. ..what? Um, they want to put a AVO against me um, for abusing Sarah. And your response is? I was like, well, I haven't done anything. You know, I was furious. I'm sitting there going, for what? Good old Inspector Hill said that he had five people that he would be willing to put up on the witness stand against me if I was to fight it. Five witnesses? Apparently, five witnesses to events that never took place. And did you say, my fiance should be able to tell you that's not true? Yep, and she says uh, she doesn't want to speak to you about it. She doesn't want to speak to you about it? Yep. Daniel came back very agitated. Ian was quite angry. And what were you thinking about Sarah Jane Parkinson at this point? I was starting to get the suspicion we'd let a rat into the house. Rat in the house? Yep. You go home and you live with Sarah Jane Parkinson? Yep. Even though you've got this AVO? Yeah. <laughs> saying that uh, you're, a, you're a monster, you're a a violent man, yep. and she's your victim. Yep. Parkinson blames her overprotective police colleagues for the AVO, and Dan believes her. And she's unequivocal about Dan's innocence when Ian Jones, the decent dad, asks his prospective daughter-in-law if there's any truth to the allegations the police are making. I actually queried her directly about it um, by herself, and she's... No, there's nothing. Daniel's never hurt me. I can't imagine he ever would. He loves me. I love him. Um, but it just, it was rang hollow. She looked you in the eye and said yep. this? Yeah, she's in, a, she's in a complex liar. Dan and Parkinson continue their lives together. He knows he's innocent, but he's beginning to have other concerns. You're suspecting that she might be cheating. Yeah, with, you know, some of the mobile phone messages and ringing and late at night. You confront Sarah Jane? Yep. So What'd you say? I said, so you're cheating on me. What did she say? And her body language said it all. You must have felt crushed. I was crushed, but I was more angry at the moment. I was just furious, you know. I just built a house, you know. She'd moved in with me, everything was going well. I had, you know, a good career. I had, you know, the, my dream car I always wanted. I had, you know, everything was going right. And on that instant, everything just went to shit. The relationship ends in November 2013. Within days, Sarah Jane Parkinson comes here to Canberra's Gungahlin Police Station to make more claims about Dan. This time, they're so extreme that to believe them, is to believe that Dan is a monster. So many allegations. Yep. So many horrific stories about you. Yeah, there are 32 in total. You, you don't get a chance to defend yourself. You're pretty much just going, didn't happen, didn't happen 32 times. And like some of the charges that get written out to you, like they're disgusting. Like, they're the worst allegations a guy can be, you know, charged with. Or it's, yeah, it's filthy. Dan had apparently raped Sarah Jane Parkinson, according to her. Allegedly. Mm. She'd stated that he'd struck her on the head with a lump of wood, a tyre lever. He'd urinated on her. Yes. He made her stand outside in the rain when she came home late and wouldn't let her in. You must be thinking, what is this? This was just the charges... Um, I was looking, reading through it. I mean, they were horrific allegations. Some of the worst of, you know, in the domestic violence you'd see. And that just makes me furious. You've gone from, you know, meeting this innocent, sweet girl to this 
premeditated monster who's capable of making all these allegations against you without a care in the world and thinks you can get away with it. And you just sit there and go, who is this person? Yeah, who is this person? Yeah, it was just, she just flipped. She was like a complete stranger. On Christmas Eve 2013, Dan Jones' world falls apart. He was working here at the Alexander McConaughey Correction Centre as a prison officer. And as he's leaving to go home, he is arrested in front of his colleagues and charged with 32 counts of domestic violence, including rape. He could not believe it. But Sarah Jane Parkinson's work was not yet done. Her next target was Ian Jones, Dan's father. Coming up... We are in the fight of our lives. A family under siege... He's going to end up in jail for 18 to 20 years. Plan their fight back. You went to this war. Was, yep, this was a battle. But is it enough to stop Parkinson's deceit? She alleged you'd come to her home, rammed her head into the, a retaining wall, kicked her and you raped her. Apparently so. That's next on 60 Minutes. It's January 2014, and Dan Jones is facing 32 counts of domestic violence, including rape, brought against him by his former fiance, Sarah Jane Parkinson. Dan has lost nearly everything, his home, his job, and his reputation. He's virtually under house arrest at his parents, while Parkinson lives in his house. His bail conditions are so strict one breach and he'll also lose his freedom. You just completely lost, helpless, confused, everything's just going around in your head like it was me against the whole AFP. It was pretty much me against any person in a blue uniform at that point. It's obviously not the most favourable place to come back to. Yeah. So overwhelmed by what was happening, the Jones family realised they were under siege and that it wasn't only Sarah Jane Parkinson they had to worry about, it seemed police believed every word she uttered. So I got the family together and I said, we are in the fight of our lives. We are battling two police services, New South Wales and the AFP. We're incurring huge legal costs and the consequences to Daniel, if this runs the way it's looking it's going, he's going to end up in jail for 18 to 20 years. I can remember saying, people are going to get angry at each other. We're going to snap at each other. We're going to be tired. Um, it's going to cost a lot of money. Um, but we have to do this because it's wrong. Did you mentally change then? Yep, I what, did. To what? I went on, well, I'll use the term war footing. I went. Everything was about achieving my goal, which was proving Daniel innocent and having Sarah Jane and the police held to account. Um, that was your focus? Yep. You, 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 you went to this war? Was, yep, this was a battle. That's how I treated it. There was, was only one way to do it, identify your enemy, know who they are, marshal them, corral them and finish them. If there was a battle, the front line was here the Australian Federal Police Station at Gungahlin. It's here that Sarah Jane Parkinson found a willing ear. In particular, AFP Acting Sergeant Scott Corcoran. He was the first to investigate the allegations against Dan. Corcoran has since left the force. This was not a mistake or an oops. This was a carefully orchestrated, prolonged and vicious attempt to get Daniel. If Ian's anger is on display, it's for good reason. Police here again backed Sarah Jane Parkinson when she suddenly made outrageous allegations against him. Within a month of Dan's arrest, Ian too found himself slapped with a court order. One breach of that order, and he could also be sent to jail, something he believed Parkinson was aiming for. We had an enemy, and I do mean an enemy. We were literally besieged. 
You're looking at the cameras, which I are am. still here. They're still here. In response, the Jones family went into defence mode, setting up cameras both in and outside their home to protect themselves against any false allegation by Parkinson. There's still a camera here with mm. the front door. Michelle and Ian began obsessively compiling proof of their every move, keeping receipts and ensuring CCTV cameras could identify them and writing detailed diaries. Amy was at work, that was my daughter-in-law, uh, stayed until about 10 p.m. for home and then home for 10.37 p.m. It, it's quite precise, isn't it? And while the Jones family lived under siege, Sarah Jane Parkinson set up her new life with her policeman lover, taking up residence in the home Dan had built. You were wiped out and another one came in? Yep, and I was paying for a mortgage for him and his three kids to live in my house. <laughs> they moved into your house yep. and life went on. Yep. And you... Yep, they had everything I ever worked for and I had nothing. Before we knew what was going on, we had four plainclothes detectives coming up the driveway. For this family that had only ever done things by the book, Parkinson's next move was incomprehensible. On March 21st, 2014, a posse of police officers arrived at the Jones home to arrest Dan. And as soon as I made a turn to go inside the house to get my phone so I could call the lawyers, they just jumped the gate and just slammed Daniel up against the wall here. So there were four men on top of Daniel making the rest. And I had no idea what was going on. Uh, they didn't tell me I was being arrested. They didn't tell me what for. She's screaming, you're shouting. I'm telling you to get back in the house and lock the door. Do not let them in. I thought, here we go. Today's the day. This is where it starts. This is where it's really going to get difficult. Dan was charged with yet another sexual assault of Sarah Jane Parkinson, a story she would add more and more shocking detail to over the coming week. Parkinson's final account was of a violent and horrific rape. You'd come to her home, rammed her head into the, a retaining wall. You jumped on top of her. You had forced her to open up a condom packet. Uh, you kicked her and you raped her. Apparently. That's quite an allegation. It's a big one. And utterly untrue. What no one realised was that this photograph of Dan holding his nephew Hunter was proof that he couldn't have done it. It was taken earlier on the day of his arrest by his sister-in-law. Crucially stamped with date, time and location, it showed Dan could not have been anywhere near Parkinson at the time she claimed he'd raped her. Yet, Dan faced the court fighting for his freedom. I can remember seeing him handcuffed and um, looking over his shoulder at us and um, it became a habit of mine to go, chin up. Shoulders back, chin up. This was it. This was where Dan's life, as he knew it, came to an end. So serious was the charge of rape that Dan, a former prison officer, was denied bail and sent to Australia's toughest jail, Goulburn's Supermax. Probably the worst day of their lives, that one. The taking of someone's freedom is supposed to be the last act. Daniel was banged up so fast it wasn't funny. And if anyone found out who he was while he's in there, he was dead. So I got one phone call. Um, I spoke to Dad and he said, you know, we'll get through this and everything. And um, yeah, his last, wor last words to me on that phone call were, I love your son. And I could hear his voice breaking. Um, you know, he's the, the strongest guy I know, and if he was struggling to get through it, then how was I expected to, to do the same? Um, that phone call, like, broke me, you know? Mm. Coming up, an innocent man locked away. I thought, what are we going to do? 
Another victim. She'd made me feel as though I was guilty of everything she'd said. Sarah Jane Parkinson's shocking history exposed. But people at school thought for 10 years that my dad was a rapist. But is her trickery about to unravel? What the evidence showed is it didn't happen. That's next on 60 Minutes. Dan Jones is locked away. The former prison officer in a jail that houses the worst of the worst, Goulburn Supermax. Outside the jail, his family is desperately trying to free him and undo the damage done by the woman who once claimed to love him, Sarah Jane Parkinson. But this was not the first time Parkinson has accused an innocent man of rape. She'd made me feel as though I was guilty mm. of everything she'd said, everything. Ten years ago, Parkinson accused Keith Lewis of raping her and threatening to kill her and her family. They were extraordinary allegations because at the time, Parkinson's best friend was Keith Lewis's daughter, Sarah. This is a girl who I trusted my life with and why would she lie? But my dad wouldn't do that. But why would someone lie? But people at school thought for 10 years that my dad was a rapist. I felt like my heart had been ripped out and I was looking at people thinking, what are they judging me? That's what my thoughts were. And I just, I remember going to the bedroom and just bawling my eyes out, just thinking about this. What do I do here? But Parkinson's hideous claims didn't end there. She also accused Keith of sexually assaulting his own daughters, Sarah and Rebecca, and abusing other girls at their school. Accusations that were all lies, but devastating for his family. Dad held me and he was crying, and my dad to me is, I don't think I've seen him cry very often in my life. And um, my dad said to me, um, he held me and he cried and he said, I didn't touch her, I, and he was crying, and I just, to me, that was the most heartbreaking thing that you would ever have to see or, or hear from your dad, this strong, stoic, navy, you know, person that I've always looked up to, to hold you, bawling his eyes out, saying, I did not touch her, I promise you. And you found yourself, you said, even saying to your wife, do you believe me? How shocking they to have these conversations. Yeah, why would I be having that conversation? Like, why should I be having that conversation with my wife? I'm, I'm, I'm defending myself over something that I haven't done. Yeah, exactly. Police agreed Keith Lewis didn't have a case to answer and he was never charged over Parkinson's allegations. But Keith's family, his wife Robin and daughters, are still hurting. Natural, sir. I know, natural eyes. I just feel this helplessness that I just don't understand. I want to scream at her and ask her, why, why, why would you ever, ever do this to us? But I can't. It's just, I feel broken when I see someone that could do such a horrible thing to such a good person. I hate what this has become, and reading through everything, I have concerns for physical and mental health. It's the same question being asked by Dan Jones. In his daily letters from jail, he writes about his confusion, frustration and despair. I'm scared. I shouldn't be because I've done nothing at all. But there is a small percentage in me that tells me I'm fucked. It's worrying to know that I'm not even safe at my home when I'm asleep. And there didn't seem to be any good news. Dan's parents were now faced with telling their son his time in jail while awaiting trial might be many more months. And he sat there and not a word, not a word. He just had tears, tears coming down his face. And I thought, I thought, what are we going to do? You could see he was broken. Yeah. Oh, well, that was a terrible day to have to tell him that he might have to stay longer. This whole jail business was terrifying and distressing. You had to do things like 
do his will for him. <laughs> Organise a funeral if he should need it. I said to Daniel one day, and I said to him, Daniel, I have to ask you about your will. And because we, we knew it was dangerous, him being in there. As the Jones family was falling apart, they had no idea that this woman, Detective Sergeant Lisa Alexander, was about to turn everything around. So you arrive uh, believing Dan Jones is a rapist? That's correct. And Sarah Jane Parkinson is a victim? That's right, yes. I thought, wow, what a family we've got here. One's in jail for rape and, and the others are chasing this poor victim. When Sarah Jane Parkinson escalated her claims of harassment by the Jones family, the case was handed over to the AFP's criminal division and Detective Alexander. It wasn't long before Parkinson, the long-suffering victim, would be viewed as a suspect. She had been believed by everyone mm. prior to you. Mm. A whole police force had backed her. Um, it's fair to say she didn't expect not to be believed. Am I right? Yeah, you are, yeah. She'd been believed. And I believed her until the evidence started to show something different. How important was Lisa Alexander? <laughs> she was a godsend, an absolute godsend. Very professional. Um, very calm. The behaviour was completely different towards us. Lisa Alexander, she turned the tide. Yeah, she saved Daniel, ultimately. Um, without her, he'd probably still be inside. Um, but, yeah, when she came along, it was very clear straight away that things were different. Can you tell me, in your own words, what your understanding of the caution is? Um, and I can choose if I say or do anything, yeah. and whatever I do or say can be used as ever. Yeah. For the first time, Sarah Jane Parkinson's allegations were being scrutinised, and Parkinson didn't like it, saying so in text messages to her police confidant, acting Sergeant Scott Corcoran, who was now no longer in charge of the case. In one, she wrote to Corcoran, Lisa showed up at my work on Sunday and caused a bit of a scene. She is horrible, and I don't want to talk to her again. If Parkinson was rattled, it was for good reason. Lisa Alexander was scrupulous in her investigations. Someone had uh, reported all of these fake um, crimes and blamed Daniel for all of them. And as far as I could was concerned and what the evidence showed is he wasn't responsible for any of it. It didn't happen. She said, Daniel didn't do this. She said, I've got a lot of experience. She said, he didn't do this. And we were... Repeat that but, again. Yeah. <laughs> well, it was like, is this, is, this, is, this, is this a trick? But it wasn't a trick. Lisa Alexander's case against Sarah Jane Parkinson was so compelling that the Department of Public Prosecutions in the ACT called for an emergency bail hearing. Dan, whom they'd so relentlessly pursued into jail, was now someone they desperately wanted out. And after four and a half long months, Dan was released. Even now, for Ian and Michelle, coming back to remember that moment is too much. Coming up, 
how a good cop... I was horrified. ...exposed Sarah Jane Parkinson's lies. There's a person who's innocent. But is it too little... It has ruined us. Irreparable? Too late for the Jones family. That's next on 60 Minutes. Hand on my heart, that was Daniel. I know it was Daniel. I recognised him. Late July 2014, Sarah Jane Parkinson now finds herself in the hot seat, being questioned by the cop who would finally bring her undone, Detective Sergeant Lisa Alexander. You're saying that you drove past their house. Doesn't make any sense. I know, I just... This is the actual audio of the police interview where Parkinson is being called to account for the raft of allegations she's made against the Jones family. We put it to you, Sarah, that you reported it stolen, falsely accusing them of offence. Their allegations that will finally reveal her to be a liar. I think it was just sheer desperation. Like it's been a rough few years with Daniel. On reviewing of the evidence, um, there are a number of photos on Sarah's phone that I saw, and Sarah was very appeared to be very happy. And during those dates, Stan was in jail. So I found that very difficult, that a person could be so happy while someone else is in jail. Detective Sergeant Lisa Alexander had only been on the case for a few weeks. Police had spent the previous two years believing Sarah Jane Parkinson's claims of rape and domestic abuse, which had put Dan Jones behind bars. Now, Parkinson was claiming a pattern of persistent harassment threats and theft implicating Dan's parents Ian and Michelle and his brother Andrew. Do you think the Jones family would have survived this if justice ultimately didn't prevail? Well, it was already falling apart. Parkinson made many accusations, including that she was driven off the road and attacked by a man wielding a knife. This was a knife that you actually were able to trace? Yes. The steak knife Parkinson claimed was used to attack her was her own. We did a search warrant and the set of six knives was only five knives. We had those knives later compared and that was one of the set of six. ACT Police Alir speaking. Hi, um, my name's Sarah Parkinson. My power was cut off before, but um, I had a lock on the, on the power box and that's gone now. Parkinson also implicated the Jones family in multiple break-ins at her house. Police Operations, Jane speaking. Hi, um, my name's Sarah Parkinson. Um, last week, my house got broken into um, and one of the things that was taken was my iPad. Then she claimed her iPad had been stolen and that software indicated it was at the Jones house. It's um, a bit of an ongoing thing at the moment. Um, I'm giving evidence in a trial against my ex-partner and his family's been harassing me and the house has been broken into eight times. She was saying, uh, my iPad's stolen and I know where it is. That's right, yeah. It's at the Jones home. Mm. Yeah. But... She had a GPS tracker on her car, is that right? She did, yes. It's almost eerie to see a lie unmasked so easily as this GPS track of Parkinson's car. What did that show? Showed that someone drove from Sarah's house to the Jones's house. That was Sarah Jane Parkinson planting the iPad outside the Jones family. Yes, it was. House. So the, the lies are mounting. Mm. Yeah. The lies kept coming. This time, Parkinson claimed that someone had broken into her car at work, and again, probably the Jones family, she said. But CCTV footage showed Parkinson briefly leaving work and unlocking her own car to set up the story of a break-in. 
on review of that footage, it showed that no one had broken into Sarah's car that day. We watched all the footage and it was clear to me by the end of watching that footage that Sarah had lied. So I thought, if she's lied to me, perhaps she's lied to the earlier investigators. What do you feel when, as a police officer, when you have that thought? Oh, my blood ran cold. I was horrified that that may be the case. What Lisa Alexander proved was that Sarah Jane Parkinson was nothing more than a serial liar. Daniel was my issue then. So uh, it was, she's lying to me. She's lied to me now on four occasions. There's probably an innocent person in jail. Coming up, my only dream in life, Liz, was to have a nice little house with my family around me. That's all I ever wanted. I didn't think that was a lot to ask. It's not. The cost of innocence. Sarah Jane Parkinson will probably watch this. Mm. Is there anything you want to say to her? That's next on 60 Minutes. For Dan Jones and his parents, Ian and Michelle, there is no joy. With all charges against Dan dropped, the nightmare that's been inflicted upon them by Sarah Jane Parkinson is now laid bare. The years of fighting to prove Dan's innocence has quite literally destroyed them. Can you put into words what these last six years have been like? Um, they've taken a horrendous toll. They've... Daniel's lost his career, his reputation, his livelihood, his house. Michelle and I expended huge amounts of money, um, which resulted in, uh, cons significantly contributed to our divorce after over 30 years of marriage. It's shattered our, any belief we've got in the police, the legal system, the judiciary, the DPP. Um, it's destroyed our family. It has ruined us. Is it irreparable? Yes, I think so. So who is Sarah Jane Parkinson then? I think she's a lying, vindictive, cancerous human that should not be around other people at all. I was a woman who could go bang, bang, got a question, bang, I've got an answer. You know, I'm, I was a professional. I was in a professional position, position. All that's gone. You know, my marriage is gone. And my, fa my family, you know, all I ever wanted in life, my only dream in life, Liz, was to have a nice little house with my family around me. That's all I ever wanted. I didn't think that was a lot to ask. It's not. I didn't think that was a lot to ask. For five years, Parkinson vigorously fought the charges brought against her by Detective Lisa Alexander of falsely accusing Dan Jones of rape and abuse. But early this year, Parkinson finally pleaded guilty, admitting to the court she'd made it all up. She was sentenced to prison for three years and one month. At least two of those years will be spent behind bars. So why did she do it? Well, according to the DPP, Parkinson was motivated by greed. The house that Dan built, and money she hoped to get when Dan was locked away for years. She saw a comfortable family with some savings. And uh, she wanted it. And she almost got it. She did, she almost got it. 
except for Lisa Alexander. She didn't count on Lisa. And as criminals go, how do you class her? She'd be up with the worst. I think it's appalling what she did. I think it's awful that anybody could do that to another person. Um, I can't fathom what she did. The fact that Sarah Jane Parkinson was, as the court described, a pathological liar is shocking enough. But the question the Jones family wants answered is, why was she able to cause so much damage? Why didn't police stop her earlier? And why didn't the DPP test the evidence the police claimed they had? This was a failure at every point. The police, the legal profession, the judiciary, the DPP, uh, every single point this was a failure. And a catastrophic yes, failure. A catastrophic failure. The magistrate said Sarah Jane Parkinson's relationship with police may have emboldened her. It may have. Because she hadn't been challenged. Sarah, in my opinion, knew the system. There are many protections put in place for real victims of domestic violence and sexual assault. In my opinion is that Sarah knew them and she abused them. What is the overriding emotion you carry with you? Anger. Hang on, I've survived on anger for six years. And it's not yet abated. I don't know that it will. Unless, possibly, people are held to account. Dan was never guilty, but proving his innocence cost the Jones family more than $600,000 and everything they owned. It's money they should never have had to spend. Despite the family's pleas, it's money none of the authorities involved are willing to repay. You know, obviously, without mum and dad's financial backing, then, you know, I'd be in jail, as simple as that. So, yeah, I want mum and dad to have what they lost in being compensated for everything that's happened. I mean, it's torn our family apart. Sarah destroyed that family. It's awful what happened to the Joneses. I can't even imagine what it would be like but they are good people and she destroyed that family. And they, Dan didn't do anything to cause this. He did absolutely nothing. Nothing. Dan Jones is now living in Perth. Zigzag. Yeah. No. As far from Canberra as he can possibly yeah, get. No. And remarkably, he's found love again with his new girlfriend, Bridget. But Dan's story has left them all with deep and lingering emotional scars. Dad? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mum, I think there's like a... All caused a by one person, Sarah Jane Parkinson. Would you like to say something to her? I don't think I can say it on camera. I really don't. I think if she ever came near my family again, God help her. So God help her. Stay away from my family. Sarah Jane Parkinson will probably watch this. Mm. Is there anything you want to say to her? No. And there's one more insult for the Jones family, the real victims of this crime. Despite what they've been through, they don't qualify for any compensation. Their only hope now rests with the ACT government authorising a special payment. No word yet, but we'll let you know if it happens. Hello, I'm Liz Hayes. Thanks for watching. To keep up with the latest from 60 Minutes Australia, make sure you subscribe to our channel. You can also download the Nine Now app for full episodes and other exclusive 60 Minutes content.